Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Envision Coworking, where you'll share an inspiring space with a community of creative and supportive people. Our speaker this evening is Cheryl Bishop. Cheryl is a heart-centered speaker, author, and trainer. She has assisted Colin Sprake in building Make Your Mark since its launch in 2009. In April 2018, with the influence of God, Cheryl launched Resilient Women in Business. This business supports business women to achieve clarity and focus and to increase their revenue. Vancouver Business Network members and most welcome visitors, it's time for you now to put your hands together and let's together give Cheryl Bishop a warm BBN welcome. Thank you, Roger. My pleasure. Thank you, Roger. All right, who wants to learn about sales tonight? Oh, I think you can do better than that. Who wants to learn a little bit about sales? Yeah. yeah, okay, all right. You're getting a little better, but I still think you, well, this way. So we're gonna talk about learn, uh, prospects, true need, and double your sales in 30 days. I have a little uh, saying below that says, your next result and results is directly related to your current influence, feelings, thoughts, and actions. And I'm gonna get into that first before we get into anything else. Business and life is 95% psychology. It is what happens between your ears will lead you to your what? Do you have any idea? Results. And I'll explain it more. And here's how. So first, this is a formula that I really wish they would, we would educate, or we could educate in schools on a really deeper level. I stands for influence. However you are influencing your world, good or bad, Influence, what are you reading? Influence, what are you watching on TV? Influence, who are you listening to? Because all your influence in your world for your business, personally and professionally, will lead into your thoughts. Your thoughts will lead into your feelings. In fact, you cannot feel angry without having a thought first. You cannot feel embarrassed without having a thought first. You cannot feel, what else? happy without thinking, right? So thought for you in entrepreneurial world and the business owner is extremely important. That is actually the number one reasons either people succeed in their business or they fail, is what you're thinking. Because your thoughts go into your feelings and your feelings go into your actions and it's your actions that are ultimately gonna give you results in your business. When I first learned this formula was, uh, oh gosh, 12 years ago where I had a friend of mine doing, oh no, probably longer now, 14 years ago, I had a friend of mine doing a dream board workshop. Are you all familiar with a dream board where you have a piece of big board and you cut out pictures from a magazine, you paste them on the board? So I was at this workshop and I decided I wanted to do this dream board. So I cut out this picture of this uh, beautiful white big kitchen, had a one bottle of wine with a glass beside it on the kitchen counter. And then I cut this picture out of this lady in this hammock right off this gorgeous beach in this pool. And then I cut out a picture of a house with one car in the driveway. So when I finished my dream board, my friend that had the, the dream board workshop said, Cheryl, I would like to see your dream board. He looks at it and he looks at me and says, this is kind of sad. And I'm like, what do you mean sad? This is my dream board you're talking about. He said, well, Cheryl, I know you very well. What I see on this dream, dream board is one bottle of wine with one glass, single. Woman by herself, single. One vehicle in the driveway, single. He said, do you want that? You see, at the time, I was influencing myself that my husband was not a very nice man as far as I was concerned. In my mind, I was influencing myself of how I thought of him. And when my friend said, is that what you want? Family is very important to me. I had to take a good look at myself. So I ripped up the dream board 
And I threw it away and thought, no, I've got to start thinking different about my husband. At the time I went to counseling and she said to me, just think of something really good about him. And honestly, at the time I was like, there's nothing really good. You know, when you're, when you're, when you're caught in that, it's hard for me at the time for sure to think of something really good. And I thought, okay, okay, okay. He's a good dad. I'll take a that for sure. He's a good dad. So what I noticed, this is when I recognized a formula, not only for my life, but for my business life. It depended on what my thoughts were, because my thoughts go into feelings, feelings go into actions, and actions give you a result. If you are not doing the action it takes to get your business to the next level, you're going to have the same results. And this, to me, is an important formula. I always love starting with this. So I want to ask you, how many of you want better results and more income in your business? Yes. Double hands, right? Yes, totally. That's the way to go. Good salespeople do all the talking. Great salespeople do all the listening. Very good. Are you really listening or are you just wanting to, are you just waiting for you, your turn to talk? So think about that. Are you really listening to people when they're talking to you or are you waiting to respond? Oh, I want to tell them this and you're thinking away. Great salespeople make it about the prospect, not about themselves. Because your prospects, all they want to know is what's in it for me? What's in it for me? What am I going to get from you? How can you show me that you're the person I should do business with? Here's what we're gonna go through today, tonight. For number one, for you to understand the difference between your potential client's needs versus true needs. Then we're gonna go through understanding how to create a sense of urgency and uh, scarcity to gain more sales in your business. And then we're gonna go through is how to blueprint your prospects. Does that sound great? Yeah. Awesome. I want to know, are you ready to learn? Yes. Ah, that's good. Okay, listening to your prospects' needs versus true needs. Now, the difference between the two is emotion. And I'm going to get a little deep, deeper in here for you to fully understand. Most people determine prospects' needs and then follow up to the need, which most often is not the true need. Now, here's an example for you to understand a little further. When you focus up, um, follow up, and talk to their true need, it connects with them emotionally. It connects with them emotionally and gives a prospect the trust in you that you have listened and that you care about them. When you know their true need, it is also easier to keep people committed. It's easier to, to help them keep committed to themselves and make the purchase with you. Here's an example. A person goes to a personal trainer, for an example. Their first visit, they fill out the intake form. And the intake form talks about what is their fitness goal, what weight and health goals that they have. This determines their need. Adding in questions about truly why they want why they want or need to get fit would bring out the emotion in them to assist the, to finding their true need. They may want to get fit to release weight because it's impacting the relationship. Fun time maybe with grandkids or kids, etc. So that would be a true need when we ask the questions. So let's go to the difference between if I was to call a person up like that, a typical voicemail towards a true need voicemail, for an example. So I pick up the phone, I say, hi, Bob, it was awesome to meet you today. I'm really looking forward to you getting started in your fitness program soon. That's typical that people would perhaps leave a voice message. Now the difference is, as you can see on the slide, the first part is the same. Hi, Bob, it was awesome meeting you today. I'm really looking forward with getting uh, you started with your fitness program. Here, the, the highlighted, the, the bold, to ensure you can enjoy those fun times with your kids and grandkids. That's the true need. Because when we, you ask them, your prospects, so tell me what's important about that for you. Why is it you want to go to the gym? 
oh, I want to lose weight. Why is losing weight important to you? When you keep digging down, why is that important to you? You actually get to a true need, which usually is emotional. I remember my youngest son, when he was probably about nine years old, he decided to cut a little piece out of the screen from his bedroom window. And I was always, I'm still the calm one in the family that sits and has a conversation about why he did this. So when I talked to him, he, I said, well, why did you cut the, out of the screen? And he's like, because I was angry. Okay. Who were you angry at? Not telling. Were you angry at your brother? No. Were you angry at dad? No. Were you angry at the cat? No. Were you angry at the dog? No. Were you angry at me, your mom? I saw the emotion surface. So then I knew there it is. Because you you can sense. You can see when somebody is either getting a certain feeling in their body or their whole demeanor shifts. So when you get to a true need, the truth of it, it's like a car salesman. Why do you want a van? Well, because I have a whole bunch of kids. So why is having a van for your kids so important to you? Without asking, you might not find out that one of the children needs a wheelchair and that's why they need a bigger van. So you see, by getting to a true need, you could find out the actual truth that maybe they just weren't ready to just share right off the bat. When I was doing direct sales years ago, and I had a lady that was starting the business, her name's Linda. So when I asked her, so why did you decide to start Party Like Gifts? That was years ago, 1994. And she said to me, like everybody says, well, because I want to make some extra money. So then I said to her, awesome. So why is it that you want to make some extra money? Well, my husband and I want to do renovations. Most people would just leave it at that. And I thought, no, I'm a little curious. Curious, is, it's good to be curious. I'm a little curious. Why does she want to do renovations? So I asked her, so why is it important for you and your husband to do renovations? And that's when her body shifted. And she said, well, the reason is my husband and I want to have children and we can't. So we need, want to adopt, but our home is not ready for a little one. We need to do some renovations to make sure it's safe. There it is. So anytime she was going through a challenge in business, I would bring her back to why she's doing the business, her true need to get, earn the money to do the renovations in her home so that her and her husband will be comfortable having a little one in there. That was her true need. You are the chief sales officer of your business. You are the chief officer, sales officer of your business. You must take responsibility to enhance your sales skills and understand that the true need of your prospects and clients to really understand the why. And sometimes you may need to think on your feet and that is the world you're in being self-employed. So I'd like to ask from this section so far, what did you learn from needs versus true needs? Somebody shout out, Matthew. Um, how important it is. Yeah. And just the word important, I wrote that down here. That's great. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. What else? Uh, emotion. Emotion. Yes. Using their words. Using their words. Yes. What's the purpose? Their purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. What else? Uh, owning that you're the chief sales officer. Yeah. It's your responsibility when you're a business owner. Everything where you want to go, it's your responsibility. So yes, being the chief sales officer of your business. Awesome. What else? Keep digging. Keep digging. <laughs> exactly. It's for, for you as a salesperson in your business, because it is your responsible to build your business when you want to build your business. It's up to you as a business owner to build your business, right? It's your responsibility. Roger. Behind every need, there is a true need. Yes. Behind every need, there is a true need. Exactly. Thank you for that. Okay. Now we're going to get into urgency and scarcity. Urgency and scarcity. It really means to prevent people from procrastination. Sometimes they're sitting on the fence and they don't know what to do. Also, another time they're on the fence is you may have given them too many options. A confused mind does nothing. So when you are doing sales presentation, 
make it simple, not a whole bunch of different either packages, narrow it down to three, or too much product or services, confused mind, can't decide, will walk away. So it's really, um, so the urgency and scarcity is meant to really prevent procrastination. Why? Well, let me tell you. Because you or your copy, meaning if you're writing copy, your marketing material, whatever you have, should not sell and pressure them. How many of you like it when people pressure you on sales? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, Matthew, you really do? Yeah, I know. <laughs> What, learn, what to learn not to do exactly. None of us like a pressure salesperson. Nobody does, right? So for you, uh, it should help them buy what you have to sell and prevent them from making the wrong decision. Often when I was doing a lot of sales and people weren't quite making a decision, and especially if they had a walk away and go, I got to think about it. So you'd ask them, well, what is it that you need to think about? I just want to make sure I'm providing you all the information. So let's just have that conference. What is it that you need to think about? And then the most important for you is to zip it and let them respond to your question. I see too many times that business owners will ask a question and they continue talking and nobody had a chance to reply. So it may be awkward, but the best thing to do is not say anything so that they can respond to your question. Does that make sense? Okay, awesome. Procrastination is a decision in itself. So how you um, do, how do you apply scarcity? Oh, well, here's a couple, here's three ways. Limit the time, limit the time. For an example, this offer is only until X date. That's one way. Another way is limit the quantity. For an example, we only have 10 or there's only two dates left. Limit the quantity, five seats left, whatever it is for you or limit the offer, the guarantee is only available till, or the bonuses are only available till, the price, the packaging, or early bird. I've seen early, early bird prices, then early bird, and then the regular price. So use all of those, because sometimes people just can't decide. And most people, when they can save some money, they're gonna jump on board. I know I've registered for things when it's like, oh, it's only available for 24 hours, and I have to now, make a decision. Have you been there? Yeah. And sometimes it helps you make the decision. I'm either going to go for it or I'm not. Instead of thinking I'll do it later. And when does later come? Yeah. Right. Right. Later is forever. Forever is later. Every day is there is a later. It's never. It's yeah. never. <laughs> right. Yeah. Ultimately add some kind of constraint, even if it's just injecting a sense of urgency. Yes, Roger. Thank you. I'm gonna I'm gonna get there because that's really important. Not to fudge numbers or anything like that. So limit um, limit limitations implore at some unconscious level that they must take action now. I'm pretty sure you've probably had that. It's like there's a button going buy now, buy now, or something will get you to take action now even though you're not directly pushing them to act. For some people, we, we liked a little bit extra bonuses or we need a reason to purchase. Above all, always make sure to back up your limitations with logic, genuine and believable reasons in order to avoid appearing misleading. You do not wanna mislead people. And that's where being honest, if you seriously, if it's an early, early bird special, then it's an early, early bird special. If it's an early bird, it's an early bird. But certainly don't say, I only have five seats at this price if you have 20. So then you want to make it appropriate. Nick. Sorry, uh, what if it's something like five years old, six months, uh, six months, right? Could you not say, I only. Question, Thank you. Repeat the question. So because you're in consulting, yeah. how would you apply this to the consulting? Because it's not like you have different prices at a, at a certain. Sales, but if they're in the business, the business as well, you can consult. Cons selling a service, good product, but I'm also selling a rate, but the rate's going to be expired, so that would be excluding. Yeah, that's. And it's. And I know I do struggle with this. Okay. 
So Nick, uh, can I just clarify a question before I answer? Is that you, it's your business, correct? Uh, no. No. Business ah, you're for a company. Okay, so you're in business development for a company. Mm -hmm. Now, does a company ever do any type of special pricing, like uh, seasonal? Maybe in the spring, they have different pricing than they do in the winter. No. Not at all. No. Could, okay. Could they add bonuses? Maybe. So if they could add a bonus and say, this bonus is only available for the next month to encourage people to go, okay, now I want it. Versus next month, the bonus is gone. Like there's, you just eat, typically there's always some sort of incentive that any company can use. Some sort of incentive or bonus or whatever it is. So maybe talk to your company and see if there's an opportunity where you could use a bonus at certain, either certain times of year yeah. or, you know, yeah. right, right. Does that help, Nick? Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Good questions. So, so far, what did you learn on the urgency and scarcity for yourself? I learned about adding a bonus. That was such a great idea. Adding a bonus. Yeah. No. Helps people from procrastinating. Yes, it does. Absolutely. What else? Scarcity tools come in different shapes, sizes, and forms. Mm, absolutely. You can do bonuses, whether a bonus is a better discount or a book or some report or an analyst of some sort. It could be, a, I mean, the, the more creative you can be in what you have available is, is a tool you can use. Remain honest. Absolutely. People can tell. And that's over analysis leads to paralysis, right? So if somebody is trying to procrastinate a lot, that means I think uh, they're going to be a dark place. So uh, creating an, an honest uh, urgency and scarcity can really save them. Yes. Honesty and, yes, being honest. Keep your offers simple. Absolutely keep them simple. A confused mind, seriously, Mm -hmm. They just don't, they won't, they won't go anywhere if you have too much to choose from. So that's where asking questions and their true need, you'll be able to identify what you have to offer when you know their true needs. It'll narrow, especially if you've got a lot of different products or service to offer them. When you know their true need, you narrow it down so that you know exactly what kind of products will fit to them. So your question is, if you increase your price to, to yeah, only if you're, if you're increasing your price and it's set and that's what your plan is, but to do it just to provide a bonus, I would say that's a little, keep in mind, words and your energy carries. So when you know you've done something wrong, chances are somebody else can feel it, right? So that's why it's so important to be honest, be genuine and not to mess around with people. People know when people are messing around with them, right? Not saying you're messing around, but it's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. No, I'm really, no, I'm asking a question. So no, that makes sense. Fort Check did that actually years ago, and once he said that, I went, yeah, because they had marked up all their um, uh, outdoor equipment or outdoor clothes, and it was not worth as much, and they actually lost a lot of it. Yeah, you don't want to play around. It's not I'm worth playing sure. around like that. Yeah, Sorry, Ian? <laughs> Final sale going out of business. Final sale going out of business. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Be very honest and be very straightforward and authentic. I mean, authentic, actually, you can be authentic in, in the wrong way as well, but just make sure that you are doing the right thing because people sense it. And I think more people this day and age are becoming very a lot more smarter and aware of the opportunities. Matthew? Can you share quickly about authentic and well, if somebody believe, oh, I don't want to say anything on the thing that's negative, but if somebody believes stealing is right and it's authentic for them, not necessarily authentic for, right? It's how they view it and what they believe. It is interesting. Perspective, like everyone has their own. Ev mm. Yeah. Yeah, everybody has their own. 
perspective on something. Yeah, yeah. Definition of honor. Some people believe in win lose. Yes. Some they call themselves smart business people. You lose and they win. Yeah, right. Win lose. Some people believe in, yeah. So just what I would say to you is follow your heart and you know what's the truth, right? For you. And perhaps defining what that is to be mm -hmm. very clear on what that is to you. Being very clear. Because your prospects can sense from you. Have you not walked into a room and go, oh, this room feels really good? And then you walk into another room, ooh, this room feels off? Have you not? Yes, yes, you have. So your prospects are just like you. They can sense when things are right for them and they can sense when things are not right for them, right? So business has energy, your words have energy, you have energy, everything has energy. So you wanna be careful of that. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that, thank you for that. And the reason it's so important to ask the questions to really understand their true need is that now you become the expert. They feel like you've really heard them. They're starting to trust you more that you know what's best for them. And so then whatever product you have, you're going to be the expert. Another thing that reminds me of, thank you for that, is like, say if I go to a chiropractor and uh, I, I, I get my session with my chiropractor, he's the expert. He should tell me what I need. I, I don't know what I need. And a great chiropractor might say to me, Cheryl, you're going to be sore in day two, right? More sore than you thought, but know that's normal for what you have right now. And that I'd like you to see, see you on day three, day five, day six. And we'll see how you're doing on day six. When he tells me that, then I'm like, okay, you know exactly what's going on. Instead of saying, oh, just come back whenever you want to. You see what I'm saying with that? Right? Because he's the expert. Nick. What are your thoughts on the anti sale? So I get it a lot in, in my business. And I say, send me your rates. Send me your rates. Send me your rates. Oh. And I say, I can't I'd send you my rates if they're not going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I could just send them a rate here that would say, yeah, we can do it for less back. Thank you, Nick. So Nick was just asking about when people say, send me your, say, your rate and stop it there. Mm -hmm. It's sales psychology. You never, when somebody asks you how much, because you're right, it, depending on their needs, you can, sometimes when you're in a service industry, you're not necessarily, can, it might not just be a black and white service depending on what they need and how vast their business is. So sales psychology basically goes, you want to ask them what they're looking for is the first thing. So they, if they call you on price, you go, oh, okay, thank you for asking that question. So what about the consulting uh, industry of what you're, what is it you're looking for? So you bring it back up to find out what they need. You don't answer the question and you, you're right. You don't send them the quotes because if you send it, Chances are they're shopping on price. That's all they're doing. They're shopping on price. But you need to have that connection so that you can understand exactly what their needs are. So I often, when, when somebody asks me on price, it's like, well, first I'd like to find out what exactly you need so I make sure that when I do give you the price, it is the right price. So let's just back up a little bit. What exactly are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for this kind of product. What interests you about that product? Like what, what do you want to get out of that product? So you just got to keep asking questions and listening, asking questions and listening. Because you're the expert. And even if they go, can't you just give me a price? You could say something like, well, I'd love to give you a price, but I don't want to give you the incorrect price. And because my products are, or our products and services are really important, I want to make sure that you as our client, I'm going to serve you the best. So this is why I need to know a little bit more before I answer the question. And usually when you say things like that, people are like, oh, okay. Because they want to be treated like a great client. And they respect that you want to treat them like a great client. Right? Absolutely. How many of you taken client on where you wish you didn't? Right? 
Uh, we all have pretty much experienced that. So that's where it's important to ask questions, listen, ask questions, listen, and make sure that it is a good fit. I know in my industry, I always want to make sure, sure that what I do is a good fit for them. And for some, it's not, and that's okay. It might be somebody else I can refer them to. So awesome. Great questions and great feedback. Excellent. So now I want to get into blueprinting. Uh, the biggest mistake for salespeople that I have found is they're misaligned. So out of alignment of the sales cycle blueprint, I'm going to explain this to you. And my final slide on here, you'll be able to take a picture of all that I'm going through if you'd like. So the blueprint starts like this. Uh, of all salespeople in the world about to make a sales call, this is a stat that 50% have no idea what questions they're going to ask. They just get on the phone and they wing it, right? You want to be prepared for a sales call. 40% have a general idea of what questions they're going to ask. 10% have some questions in mind. Of, all the ten, um, of that 10%, only one has a written list. I find it it's very similar to goals. You know, when people have really strong goals, they may have them up here first and not even written down. And then it's a smaller percentage that actually have them written down. And then it's even a smaller percentage that actually carries those goals with them every day to remind themselves. Very similar stats. So I wanna ask you, are you the 1% with a list of questions when you're doing sales calls? Good, because you need them. So you stay on track. So you don't forget. So that, not a, thank you. Pointers to help you trigger your mind to ask the right questions at the right time. So absolutely, I agree. And if you need a script, practice, practice, practice the script so it just sounds like it's coming, rolling off your tongue in a way, right? When you uh, commit yourself to becoming a master blueprint, your selling will become easier is typically what happens. Call reluctant. How many of you are a little, um, that cold calling say? A little, it's hard to do for some of you. Yeah. So I always changed it for me. When I was doing calls that I didn't have a relationship with people, I would change just the word of cold calling. I really didn't like that. That didn't sound very comfortable to me. And I'd always change it. I'm going to make an opportunity to call because I don't know what the opportunity could be, but I'm going to find out. So I always change that to opportunity calls. Uh, so when you do the sales print, basically you will close four out of every five sales opportunity, which is 80% closing sales. Does that sound interesting? Okay. There's a warning for you though. This will take practice, 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 and in time. Honor yourself that it does take practice to become an expert in anything actually, whether it's sales or not. You go to the gym, you want to work out, you got to be Practice, you gotta to commit to the gym. It's the same for sales. You gotta to commit to learning more and learning and identifying your style. You may have a little different style than somebody else. So step one is attention. Finding out your prospects to true need. That is your step one in any conversation is to really identify really what they're looking for so that you could, as the person that uh, they are interested in your product or service, could absolutely uh, match what you have for them. So this is where the, the, the like, the listen and trust you comes into play. Selling yourself with comfortable conversation. That's asking questions and listening, having a conversation, even when you're meeting people at a networking event. Now, you can ask questions around key areas, like what want, want makes them buy. For an example, if I want to go get a dress and I see three of them, what is my want that I decide to buy that dress. There must be a want that created me to want that one dress. Maybe I was looking for a particular color or a particular cut or a particular look. So there's definitely always a want that we want, whatever it is, and then I buy that one. What is their affordability? Affordability. Many times, especially in the consulting world, when you're out there, you want to find out what is your affordability. When I used to book speakers all the time uh, across uh, North America, one of the questions I always asked the association once we started talking is I needed to know their affordability because there were so many different avenues I could take that conversation. 
So the, knowing their affordability, whether they even have a budget or not, was important for me to know so I knew how, which angle to go so that we could serve them the best we could serve them. So what is their affordability? And their why, their true need. So important, again, again, it will show up. It's their true need that you need to find out. Once you know all the above, sales gets easier and 70% of the sales is already done. Questions to ask, Roger. Association, yeah. and you want to place Colin in front of their annual general meeting. Yes. Uh, how might the true need, how would that conversation go? So I, thank you. So what Roger asked is when I was doing, a, say a dental association, finding their true need. So it wouldn't be, it would be the association, all the attendees. What is the attendees true need? Why are you putting on the conference? What's the purpose of the conference? Who's attending? How long have they been? Like I get ask all those questions to get identify a true need so that Colin was able to create a presentation absolutely personalized to those attendees that were coming out. Does that answer the question, Roger? Awesome, awesome. So it's really important to ask questions and listen all the time. The more questions you ask, the more clarity you're gonna get. Oops, wrong way. Ah, ah. Okay, we did that. So questions to ask a prospect. What do you feel your biggest needs are at this time? It could be a question you may wanna ask. What would you like to see happen with yourself or your business that's not happening now, even for the consulting, when you're consulting a business? What would you like to see happen for yourself or your business that's not happening right now? Even when you go into sales training, you go into the team, you, when you go prior to you going there, you wanna ask them those types of questions. What do you want to accomplish in the next 12 months? Find out what their goal is so that you can be in line with their vision or their goal, when, especially when you're working with a larger business that has maybe team members and whatnot. On a scale of one to 10, how productive are you on a daily basis? That's important for you to know, right? What if they're not productive and now you've taken them on as a client? Well, now you're gonna know how to coach them in a certain way because they're not very productive. So now you're aware of that. You can even ask them things like on a scale one to 10, where is your positive mindset versus a negative mindset so that you know how to work with them appropriately and use appropriate words. So by asking questions and listening, you have now captured their interest. Now that you've asked questions and listened, they're like, oh, okay. So now you've got into step two, which is interested. Now that you have got that little bit of a relationship going, they're thinking, can you tell me more? I want to learn more about that. This is really interesting. I, I need to find out more. So you would say something like this. If I understand you correctly, your focus at this time is in the area of XXX and your um, and XYZ. Is that correct? So whatever they said to you, you basically want to say it back to make sure you fully have clear communication. Have any of you ever communicated with a client and then there was a miscommunication that happened, right? It's often because we don't confirm what they said to us. We don't say it back so that we fully understand their needs. So it's always good to repeat it. And then you have some concerns in ABC. Then they say, yes, exactly. Now they know you fully understand them. Are you with me? Yes? Energy, are you with me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay, good, excellent. It's important, it's just the same as any relationship, whether it's with kids, a spouse, or something. You wanna make sure, because we all do have a mind that kind of wanders sometimes, right? So we wanna make sure that we are fully engaged with our prospect and our client to what their true needs are and have that conversation. Then we go into step three. Step three is conviction. So here is that you can convince them that your product or service is the way to go, if that product and service truly is the way to go, right? Because when you're the expert, they are not the expert in your field. You would know what their true needs after having that conversation and where they're gonna go. So you would say that absolutely, what you have to offer is the best. Questions, uh, there's four questions that maybe need to be answered here. What is it that you are selling? So you need to be very clear. 
there's times where I've asked people, so um, now that it, maybe I'm interested in your business, so what is it you're selling exactly? And then they, oh, well, I have, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it's too much. So you want to be clear on what you are selling to them. How will it benefit me, meaning them? They just want to know what's in it for them. And then, of course, they're going to want to know how much it's going to cost, and we will share with that. And can you prove it? Testimonials are always great. On the back of, you don't have anything on the back of your business card. I would like you to pay attention. When you pass your business card out to somebody, I bet you that they do this automatically. They flip to the other side because they want to see what else is on the other side. And I would suggest some testimonies, if you can, on the other side of your business card because when people read stories, like a testimony, like, oh, wow, that's really nice they may be able to absolutely resonate with that testimony. So I call that real estate on the back of your card if you're not using it. Honestly, one side of your card should be your ego, meaning your business, your contact information, and the other side should be your prospects and clients' ego, what's in it for them, okay? Then you go into step four, which is desire. Create the urgency and scarcity in your proposal, whatever that may be. You know, for, for you, Nick, maybe you, you already know ahead of time, okay, your company can offer this bonus and the deadline is this. Then you put that in your proposal. If you're doing a proposal, uh, this is limited and, or 30 days. This price is good for 30 days. A lot of companies will do that. And after that, you got to do a whole new proposal depending on the needs. So you get into step four, desire, and that's where they want it. Your prospects want what you've already um, presented them. And then that's where you need to ask for the commitment. That's where you need to close the sale and celebrate. And I must say to you, I would highly encourage you to congratulate your, your now client. They want to know they made the right decision. So congratulate them. When they sign on the dotted line, you give them a high five and say, congratulations. I am so looking forward to taking care of you. Like they, need, they want to be congratulated that they made the right decision to be with you. So really important to congratulate them so that they feel like, okay, awesome. This is, feels like a good decision that I've made. So um, go from there. Now, if any of you want to take a picture of the whole screen, everything I just went through on the blueprinting, what I call blueprinting, you're welcome to take a picture. And it just has all the steps and questions to remind you, that if you when you want to do this for yourself. And it obviously will be available online too. In the platforms of Zoom. Can you, can you comment on the ultimate authenticity? Pretend I'm a realtor, I'm in a listing, somebody comes to my open house, I know that another house that I'm not involved with is the right house for them. Oh. So the ultimate in authenticity is to say, go to that address, that's the realtor, maybe here, tell my symptom, Maybe it's worth best cases, there's an exchange of favors, but it's the right thing for the client. If I were that realtor, I would not send them to that realtor. I would take them to that realtor and introduce them to that realtor. That's what I would do. I don't know that all, all realtors would do that, right? But knowing that, you know, anytime there is somebody, like for an example, for me, if I had a woman in business, that perhaps is not at the level where my avatar is, then I would say, you know what? You are better suited with Sally over here versus here because I may not be able to do you justice. You may need X, Y, Z, which I don't provide at this time because my avatar is here. Does that help, Roger, that you're saying? But yeah, I, I mean, for me, I, I'm all about well, trusting everybody is, but not everybody is everybody else, right? You want to do what's best for your prospect because they're going to remember that. If they know that you knew of a better deal when they find out, what do you think they're going to do? Yes. And say, I'm never going to refer that realtor. We're just using realtor as an example. So if anybody's a realtor in here, don't, you know, I'm not digging at realtors. We're just saying it doesn't matter what business you're in. When they find out that they could have either had a better deal with you or you knew of something that was more beneficial for them, whatever it is, once they find out, they're not going to be happy. And isn't that your reputation? Your rep you want to keep your reputation clean. You know, that's why I, I mean, how many of you done this? I remember referring someone to someone, and I never experienced that someone's uh, service, 
And then I returned, referred my friend to that someone. And then my friend came back to me and said, have you ever experienced them before? I was not happy. And that was the day I went, oh, anytime I refer people, I really want to get to know them better because it's my name, right? See, I got to be very careful of that. Awesome. Are you taking a picture of the slide? You're good? Okay, excellent. And, oh, I already put those questions in. We already went through that. So what did you learn from the, the sales blueprint? I know it's a lot. It takes time to absorb. So again, when I say practice, 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 I really mean practice. It takes time. There is a blueprint. There is a blueprint. There is a structure, absolutely. There's a sales psychology. Never, biggest thing I can give you, never, at, I'll get right to you, never when they say, what is your price, and you answer it, they're just shopping, because now you have zero relationship. You haven't asked them what they're looking for or anything, so they're only going to shop on price, period. Yes, be clear about the questions you want answers to. Pre-plan, think about this. Pre-plan, think about the questions you want, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like going to the gym. Are you just going to go and pick up a 10 pound just like that? If maybe you can't even do, like you've got to assess your own body. What is your strength that you're able to do? It's like anything. Plan. Research the prospects. Research the prospects. Yeah. I just talking about, hey, have you, have you found yet? Or have you been thinking about, hey, I know this website, yada, 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 business. Research is key because if you ask somebody a question and it was the, the answer was absolutely available to you, like really easy peasy, they're just going to go, what do you want? So you need to get to know them. Absolutely. But Roger. I was a salesman for Xerox in the 70s. We had professional selling skills, a part of which was to rephrase the question. And it always felt so manipulative mm. to me. Quite sure the customer was equally as uncomfortable. And yet, Xerox, that's what we had to do. Yeah. It just felt wrong. Well, it's like the old, you know, old days where it's a sale, the car salespeople, you know, right? Like the consumers are becoming very more aware of all of that. The more honest and truthful and connected you are with a prospect, the more they're going to like you, know you, and trust you. Right? So, yeah. Thank you. Anything else you want to mention what you learned? Like Gavin? The congratulations. Huge. You have no idea how that alone will shift you. They will feel so good that they made the decision to go with you. It's huge. You must congratulate people when they decide to. And I hug people. So you can do whatever you like. You know, I'm hugging you. <laughs> I'm a hugger. But we'll do, and all my clients love that. So, because they're my avatar. So you figure out how you want to congratulate them, whether they like high fiving or giving them a, whatever, a pen, congratulations, something. Must congratulate them. Thank you for that. I was recently given a uh, bottle of, uh, uh, I just accidentally knew it was homemade wine, but it had the nice label on it. It looked like the $20 bottle of wine, and I know it cost four, but I felt special having been given that bottle of wine by somebody who I had bought something from. Perfect. Yeah. And you can give them whatever it is. Absolutely. Now, here's a, uh, just a caution for you. Thank you for bringing that up. Because what if you didn't like wine at all, and they give you wine? That would tell them, you, you don't know that I don't drink alcohol? Or you give them a Starbucks card because you love Starbucks and then you give it to them and they're like, I don't even like Starbucks. So you don't even know them yet. So what I'm saying is that's why it's so important to ask questions and listen to get to know your prospect really well so that you know what they like. Not everybody's the same. And when they really hear that you get them, wow, you bought red wine, you knew I didn't like white wine, thank you for that. Or you bought me a Tim Hortons card because you knew I didn't like Starbucks, thank you for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Whether a dog lover, cat lover, whatever it is. Absolutely. So that when you do call them, if they love to travel, 
where have you been traveling, right? Like have that conversation. And networking. When you're networking with people, find those things out. I built a great years ago when I used to network a storyboard of trade all the time. Me and this guy, the, the, all we would talk about is camping. Where'd you go this year? Because we always go somewhere. I love to camp. He loves to camp. So we always talked about camping. So then we got to know, like, and trust. And then we started doing business together because we did. We, we really had a conversation about life stuff first. So absolutely. Awesome. Okay. I don't I have no idea where the time is, but 85% of everything you do is you. And I'm going to go through a little bit of training about yourself. There are people you can either focus on rewards, you can focus on results, which you should be, and you can focus on that you can. The, rever the versus, the flip side, penalties. For an example, reward versus penalties. Let's say you are typing up a proposal for someone. Everything is energy. So if I go, oh, this proposal, it might not be really good. Oh, I don't even know if they're going to like it. Maybe it's priced too hard. Oh my gosh, I don't know, send. Now I'm sending the energy with it too. I'm focused on the penalties. What if they don't like it? Maybe it's priced too high. But when I'm focused on the rewards, I'm going to think different. Man, they're going to love this proposal. I'm, I'm going to expect an answer within 24 hours because I know this is the best proposal I've ever done. Send. Do you see the difference? You could feel the difference. Now, are you focused on results or are you focused on excuses in your business? You cannot live in both. You have to either live in results or you live in excuses. It's just like living in fear or faith. And I'm not talking about religious faith. I'm just talking about faith that everything's going to work out. You, are, you can't live in both. You're either in fear or you're in faith. Can versus can't. When you say you can, you're absolutely right. And when you say you can't, you're absolutely right. So be very aware of yourself for your business. What are you saying between your ears? Because that is going to carry you to your success. When you so believe where you're going to go in your business with all your heart and your might, you will make it. When you allow self-doubt in, that kills your potential. So be very, very aware of all your thoughts. Do you want to question? Sure you can, Matthew. I believe you can. Can you ask a question, Roger? Sure. Yes. What about the other 15%? You said 85% is you. Well, then the other 15% other is your knowledge, like a, a variety of different things. Knowledge, product, service, that sort of thing. But your business, every 85% is you. Right. Yes. <sighs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. What about uh, people that just shut you down? So I get, I get shut down a lot. Uh, just been with that broker for 30 years, just been in business, happy, good gift, thank you. What's, I mean, you can't really dig any more like that because they've been so <coughs> engaged. There's not, the, honestly, there's no relationship built. Yeah. So you can either mail them something in the mail, mm -hmm. get them to know your name. When there's, no, when there's no relationship built, it's very easy to say, no thanks. I mean, I have a website, you know, I know how many web designers, I don't even know who they are, or they're in another country and they're emailing me. I don't even know who they are. So I know they're not local. So yeah, a lot of times there's no relationship. So I would suggest popping something in the mail to them. Give them some tips, that sort of thing. Getting them to know you before is a great idea. Cheryl, you've made the whole sales process infinitely more simple. Awesome. than I could ever have thought possible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to relieve you of this because together we have to thank Envision Coworking for making this production possible. Awesome. Thank you, Simon. Back to you. Thank you.